We're in this mess because society has lost sight of what's most important. What matters most to me is my faith and my family. And I know I'm not the only one who believes that way. So we're joining together as God-fearing men and women to take the light into the darkness. Mark and Deb Hudson have been big supporters of Final Descent Outdoors for, for years. When they had the opportunity to join us as owners, they hopped at the opportunity. And Mark, he's actually a horse guy. He loves his horses, and apparently he's a heck of a roper as well. And Deb, she's a truck driver, and she travels the country hauling loads with her, her trucking company. And if Mark can't tag along, she brings her dog. And we became really, really good friends through church and uh, when they were able to join our team I and mean, we were really excited about it. You know, Mark grew up hunting and Deb, she was completely new to the sport. So this deer season rolls around in the first week we grab up a Barnett crossbow, we head to our Vol food plot, hoping to see Deb fill her first tag ever. All right, folks, we are, uh... We done some late, last minute deer hunting. I'm on a uh, food plot that uh, that guy planted. He planted it for me, so he got to return the favor and let him hunt it, I guess. So he pawned it off, and his wife's in here. He's got a crossbow, so we're gonna see if we can uh, put a smack down on a deer. It's uh, we kind of late getting in here. Man, there's a ton of deer using this. So, it's early season, just third day of season in Oklahoma. We're hoping we can't hammer them. You know it's hot, there's freaking grass hoppers climbing all over our tent. It's kind of eerie, they're just climbing all over it, but we'll see what happens, see if we can't run a broadhead through a deer out here on this green field. So, it's starting to come up really good. We finally got some rain here. Well, just a few minutes after that doe hit the ground, a big herd of deer came out from the other end of the property coming to the Evolve food plot. Had one buck in the group. He's not a giant, but Deb has never killed a buck, and we said, if you want him, he's yours. Well, here's the result of our hunt tonight. Um, kind of a funny story. Told Mark and Deb, I said, hey, you guys come out. Mark put this field in that I was hunting over, uh, we were hunting over tonight, and uh, I said, man, let's go hunt that field. Love for you guys to uh, come out. Deb's never killed uh, a buck. Have you killed a doe before? No. No, this first first deer ever. 
And uh, basically, first time ever with the, uh, any archery equipment, I had that Barnett crossbow. And I tell you what, this doe come out, came out right in front of us, uh, eating on some buck blitz, um, some corn on the ground. And I'm telling you, man, she absolutely hammered her. Ten ringed her. Uh, T1 broadhead ran through her. She was spewing blood, went out, I don't know, 70 yards and died. And then ten minutes later, here comes this guy. Uh, never harvested a buck before. He comes wandering in, walks right in front of us, just couldn't resist, uh, you know, buck blitz. And, I mean, she hammered him. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> dropped him right there. He could not tote it. So, in literally ten minutes, Deb has killed two deer. This segment is brought to you by Flextone, an evolved habitat, and by Carbon Express Arrows. This segment is brought to you by Absolute Taxidermy and Night Rifles, and by Evolved Harvest Premium Forage, Grow Groceries Per Acre, and the Deer Prefer It, and by Lights Out Trail Camera by Wild Game Innovations. The world of trail cameras will never be the same. A few days later, me and Mark are scheduled to head to Pampa, Texas with 4F Outfitters. And last minute, something comes up. Mark's not able to go, so he sends Deb in his place. And me and Deb load up, and we head out to Pampa to get after some antelope. Once we arrive at the lodge, we realize that the Ferguson family, by looking at the mounts in this place, have found an absolute honey hole in West Texas. Now the guys at uh, 4F Outfitters have done their homework. Everywhere we go, we're seeing antelope. We were seeing a ton of antelope, we just couldn't put it together. The wind wasn't right or they'd spot us and finally we spot this old buck and our guide says uh, he's got some character. And I'm not really 100% sure what that means. We asked Deb, hey, this, this, this antelope doesn't have the uh, normal looking characteristics. Basically, he's got one horn that lays out to the side. She said, Deb said, I'm looking for something a little bit more traditional. God asked me, says, hey, brother, what do you think? And if you know me, man, I'm all about the character. We've ranged them. We, we know that there's two good bucks in the group. And so we're just kind of debating here. Do we wait just a few minutes, let them get over another little hump and then make a move to get right in the wheelhouse with them? different bucks today. I don't know why I'm whispering. <laughs> We've gotten so close to so many different bucks today. We stocked in and they had an east wind. Let me tell you, the wind blows in Pampa, Texas out of the east maybe three days a year. And of course it's going to happen when I'm here. Couldn't get on them early this morning. Went back, but got in the right spot. Go in the north switch it. Wind switches out of the north. Ruins it for us. <laughs> We've been scouting. We've been looking. We've been seeing. Spotted this buck came in snuck up through here saw him go back over a ridge uh, knew he was gonna be somewhere down in this bottom and I mean <laughs> oh man Cal stuck his head up he said, he's right here <laughs> and uh, he ain't kidding I mean that was uh, well back in the day I could throw a baseball and hit him but I don't know if I could today uh, but I mean he is right there look at this horn man 
<laughs> you want to talk weird. about some character. Comes up. I mean, comes almost straight out. He's got, oh, wow. Just character. I mean, that's, I feel like I've looked out here at a, I don't know how many, 20 really big antelope today. And this guy sticks out more than any of them just because of the amount, it's just character. You know what I mean? He's just, he's different. I haven't seen anything like this. You got a name for this guy? What'd you call him? You've been seeing him for a while. I mean, yeah. You, you travel this country so much. Just the old crooked horn buck. Old crooked horn. Crooked horn. <laughs> Big old curl back too, man. I mean, he's ivory tips. How old do you think he is, bud? I think he's five and a half year old. Five and a half year old. This segment is brought to you by Double Barrel Arrow Loader and by Real App and by Gorilla Safety Harnesses. I wear one because of these. This segment is brought to you by Buck Blitz and Zippo Outdoor and by the new Barnett Ghost 410, getting faster, stronger, and lighter for 50 years. And by Buck Bomb, sense and attractants that blow away the competition. Now it's time for the Real Avid Tech Tip of the Week. Wild Game Innovations is known for their quality deer management and the importance of being able to understand the habits of deer on your property. That's why we use these great products like the Lights Out Trail Camera and the Pile Driver Deer Feeder. Let's join our good friend Adam Hayes as he tells us more about these awesome products. Wild Game Innovations, the leading manufacturer of trail cameras, introduces the Lights Out Digital Trail Camera. Choose from three newly designed invisible infrared models that feature five, six, or eight megapixel and delivers up to 70 foot invisible flash range. The Wild Game Innovations Lights Out cameras are equipped with simple to use setups and feature a one second trigger speed and wide angle lens for stills or video. The Lights Out cameras are designed to hug any tree and fit securely with their innovative adjustable mounting arms. Know what's on your property so you can properly manage and maintain a healthy environment for your deer. Wild Game Innovations also recognizes the importance of supplemental nourishment which is quickly becoming one of the most essential aspects of quality deer management. Wild Game Innovations continues to maximize the potential of supplemental feed and nutrition by providing more models of feeders to choose from to meet the needs of wild game on your property. Wild Game Innovations incorporates their digital technology into their feeders to deliver a balanced time system of feeding that in turn trains the wildlife to come in during vital shooting hours. These feeders are weather resistant and designed to deliver clog free minerals or feed. For more information about the products made by Wild Game Innovations, check them out on the web at wildgameinnovations.com. Now that I got my antelope down, it's Deb's turn. We got a little bit of a challenge for our guide. Well, we got our antelope spotted for Deb. A uh, spotting scope is a huge part of your success out here. We got them spotted, now we just gotta put a stock on and get in position for Deb to take the shot.
Missed him. Missed him. Hurry, Dib. What? He is. He's in the very back. You just shot just a little bit over him. Okay. Go ahead and get another one in. Okay. They, they don't even know where we're at or what's going on. They're just moving, just milling around. Say, they moved a little bit, but not bad. Okay, he's in the middle of the group, though. Okay. He, he's the one walking to the left, right? Yeah. Okay. Here he is. She hit him? Yeah. He's falling to the back. Deborah. Deborah. Boom! <laughs> On the ground. On the ground. Good job. <laughs> oh my God. That was awesome. <laughs> oh, wow. Sweet. Oh. <laughs> Took two, but I got him. <laughs> that was awesome. This segment is brought to you by Wild Game Innovations and Barnett Crossbows. And by Big Green Target. This segment is brought to you by GNH Decoys and Buck Ball. And by The Silent Rider. Reduce ATV exhaust noise by 60% and the new Brotherhood Compact Hunter by Flex Tone Game Calls. Damn. Check him out. <laughs> Congratulations. <Yes. Woo. laughs> One way or the other here. <laughs> yeah, that's why we call him the four-way buck. He's got those big Oh, okay. Character bumps back here behind his prongs on both sides. I was wondering. Looks like he's been in a few fights. Yeah, he's scarred up and old and black faced and he's cool. a good good one to take for sure. So that was awesome. <sighs> Woo! We got her done. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Good mass, good prongs. And like I was telling you yesterday, you know, on a classic antelope, their prongs are, are straightforward, but their uh -huh. hooks come in. So if you're looking at them from the front, you can see the hooks, but can't see the prongs as good. You look from the side, you can see the prongs good, yeah. but you can't see the hooks as good. The way his prongs flare, uh -huh. from head on, you can see see the whole yeah, he's a nice, whole shebang. Nice. Plus all this trash and character, so. Be well, hard to beat. Cool. <laughs> You know, it's really easy to throw in the towel when things don't go as planned. And, you know, when Deb missed this antelope, uh, it would have been easy to just, I missed, I'm done. But she calmed down and was able to finish the hunt and put this antelope down. And when I think about that, I think about Jeremiah the prophet. And he was known as the weeping prophet because God called him to go to his people and called them to repent. And nobody wanted to listen. Nobody liked what Jeremiah had to say. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Sin your kingdom must come down. You know, God's people who Jeremiah was called to bring this message to, they didn't just turn a, a deaf ear to the message that God, you know, laid on Jeremiah to, to preach to his people. They, they actually tried to kill him. And I don't know about you, but when it comes to threatening your life, there's a lot of folks who would throw in the towel, but Jeremiah never does. He he continues to, to preach the gospel even when people are saying, if you don't stop, we're going to kill you for it. And when I think about that, I, I, I don't know about you, but that's a challenge to me to evaluate my faith. Do I have a, a relationship with God like Jeremiah has? That I would be able to say it, like, like Jeremiah expresses this in, 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 his, in his book, uh, chapter 20, verse 19. He says that God's word is like a fire in his heart, that it's like a burning in his bones, and he can't not talk about it. I think about that and I know it challenges me to look at my life and ask those questions. Do I have a relationship with God that is like that? Do I have a relationship with God that says, God, I, I can't not talk about you. I can't not proclaim your truth. You know, sometimes in the church we have this idea that we don't want to ruffle feathers, but you know what? I, I look at Jeremiah and I look at his faith. 
and it, it's a challenge to me not to give up, and I hope that it's a challenge for you to do the same. Absolute Taxidermy is the official taxidermist of Final Descent Outdoors. 